ओम शांति अवर स्टोरी बिगिन्स इन द मिड नाइनटीन थर्टीज इन सिंध अ रीजियन ऑफ नॉर्थ वेस्टर्न इंडिया एट दैट टाइम रिलीजियस प्रैक्टिस अमंग द हिंदूज हैज हैड डीजेनरेटेड फ्रॉम इट्स वंस हाई लेवल द सस्टेन्ड इम्पैक्ट ऑफ वेस्टर्न एटीट्यूड्स had changed the quality of life the whole fabric of sindhi culture had become less refined their food and drink for instance was once of the satvik purest type fresh vegetarian meals were prepared in the spirit of devotion and eaten in remembrance of the deities in large yet close knit family gatherings but this refined tradition had gradually eroded as people began to eat meat and acquire habits of quick inattentive and uncontrolled eating people continued to perform their traditional worship but the ceremonies became empty of their once exalted meaning men's minds were filled with the greed for money the hunger for status trickery became the order of the day in business dealings angry reactions and exchanges were common place speech shifted from subjects of goodness and spirituality to talk about worldly desires new customs of buying useless and expensive items purely for show developed and of holding costly but meaningless celebrations these customs began to erode a society acknowledged to be previously full of ancient culture wisdom such a degradation was a sign not recognized at the time as other younger cultures were also evolving in the similar ways but it was a sign that the world was entering its final up heaven of unrest before the process of renewal could begin who was there to guide the people back to the path of wholesomeness certainly not the politicians nor the british rulers who exploited rather than uplifted the people nor the native royalty nor the sincere but limited social and political reformers who strove for the freedom of india from the british but had little to offer by the way of achieving freedom from corruption and vice what about the religious leaders priests pandits and preachers we gave no knowledge that could bring peace of mind good character or pure life to families who looked to them for guidance rather they had become mere readers of scriptures performing empty ceremonies and taking money from people many even passed themselves off as god or convince their gullible followers that god was everywhere such doctrines destroyed the intellects of the people banishing all higher purpose in life if we are already part of god what is there to strive for such thinking was a natural result of the corruption of spirituality and so the life of the people was derailed outwardly the community prospered the men of sindh worked hard and grew rich but 
peacefulness and order were missing from their lives false progress eroded the traditional values of their fathers passion and suffering emerged where there had once been calm outward show and a superficial and indulgent social environment measured the quality of life the position of women was particularly degraded especially after marriage mothers were treated as mere domestic servants and as playthings whose purpose was to satisfy the sexual desires of their husbands even if the man were clearly of an inferior sort a drunkard an eater of meat and fish still according to custom it was the wife's duty to consider that the husband was god he was her guru divorce was out of the question women were excluded from getting an education a wife had to cover her face with a veil she lived her life imprisoned within the four walls of her husband's home a lifelong servant in his family mist her hours taken up by the drudgery of cooking cleaning washing clothes for the claim to whom she was in bondage and the women suffered they knew quite well that they were prisoners that the men held all the keys women had no rights to engage in religious preaching nor were they entitled to become sannyasis and remain in celibacy for them there was no escape from the life sentence of marriage the sindh women were not alone in experiencing oppression world wars civil wars the genocide of minorities and the mindless and greedy exploitation of the environment were growing like a cancer on the planet but the root of all this upheaval lay in the bitter sleep of ignorance of humanity there seemed to be no glimmer of real spiritual knowledge this was a dark period indeed in this bewildering atmosphere lived one individual of the sindh community in the city of hyderabad who was very different from the rest he was called by the name dada his full name was dada lake raj though by birth he was an ordinary man dada was full of many special qualities when present among a throng of people his charisma attracted attention at once and one felt the natural humility and sincerity of his nature even more one felt the strength of his character and the magnetic attraction of his eyes he was always clean fresh and simply dressed his way of living his gentle manly manner and his true spiritual devotion won him friends everywhere dada's worth was recognized by the whole community of sindhis he had often proven to be a rock a symbol of solidity and dependability in the shifting sands of an unstable world who born in a middle class family dada rose quickly in his profession through hard work and honesty combined with cleverness 
and a focused intellect to achieve a position among the wealthy and become one of the richest man richest men in india even more even more unusual he was one of the few men with whom everyone was satisfied his family friends neighbors his business contacts too it is a rare individual who is truly dear to others not merely useful to them and who in turn has an equal amount of love for them dada lek raj was such a person will be continuing the next chapter of this book in the next video thank you om shanti